going to be a good day. Let's get into it. It is the 6th of February and it is 8.14. I am ready to get my order done. I've got my shirts and stuff all here ready to go. I had an order come in. I've possibly got a hundred shirts to do. My first hundred order. I've given them a quote. I've let them know how much it's going to be. And that was actually given to me by... If you've seen in the previous episode when I organized some high quality printable HTV, when I went in there, I gave them my uh, cards. And from that day, I've actually been given small jobs here, there. I've gone to customers' houses. I've picked up clothing. I've actually done a few jobs for them. And this is another one. They've actually given me and said, hey, look, we've got this design. How much to print this onto this? We want about 100 to 150 going to get my flash dryer starting to uh, get hot then I can get everything ready while that's heating up because it actually does take quite a while for it to heat up I want to get this order out nice and quick what I've got here is some uh, water-based palette adhesive I've just put on a new tape on my platen I've just put new tape on my platen. You can see that what, the way I did that in my video of how to get rid of the adhesive off of your platen. I went through the process of actually putting the tape on. I'm actually going to put the waterproof adhesive on there. The reason I use the waterproof adhesive is it's so much better. Using the aerosol can, yeah, you can find it, it's cheaper, but in the long run, this stuff will be cheaper, 100%. The initial cost might be more expensive, but it's cheaper in the long run because you only have to use a little bit and then you can keep using water to then create that adhesion. The reason it's also better is it doesn't go everywhere. As you can see, I've got on my platen there, you can see all this, this gunk build up here all over my actual uh, gate. It's going everywhere, you know. But I, I did only use that for a small amount of time. Then I got this and I've actually got two kilograms of it. So I'm going to be sorted for a long time. So I'm going to apply that. Then I'm actually going to put a t-shirt down to try and get rid of that real stick. What I'm doing now is I'm just drying that palette adhesive just to get it, just so then it starts to become sticky. You know, there'll still be some bits that are actually, you know, yet to dry in. I usually just try and give them a little bit of a smooth out just to make it easier to actually, then it starts to actually dry once it's just that bulk amount of adhesive sitting on there. But using your flash dryer, just put it over the top, get it, and it dries it relatively quick. And this stuff is sticky. It is sticky. Woof. Yatsy. Come on, Yatsy. Yo, I'm going to try and put my t-shirt on here. And she sticks really well. Look. Really well and not too heavy that you have to really yank the shirt off. It's just, if you're not using it, use it. So I've got my adhesive on the palette. I dried it with my flash dryer. Now I'm going to load up my screens and get them. I've got my four screens today. I've got my four screens there. Now I'm just going to load them up onto my actual carousel and start getting them ready.
gotten my uh, screen ready, I've got my squeegee clean. This is heated up, my flash dryer. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my ink, I'm gonna put it on that screen, and then I'm gonna go through the trial phase to make sure that my uh, mesh is open, clean, because I have used this before. I've actually used these screens before, and I've just left them in storage, because this is a Vuitton customer, so it's really good. I can leave them there, I don't have to go through that process of emulsioning and greasing, because I've already done the screens. I've already got his design ready to go. So I'm just going to go through that process, get the ink, hoo, 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 the white, creamy, creamy white. Make sure when you're doing white plastisol ink that you try and get some heat into it with elbow grease. Don't put it in the, don't put it under the flash dryer. Don't put it here, there, everywhere. Just make sure you try and mix it up and get some heat in there, and it actually starts to, uh, you know, smooth out that plastisol ink and make it easier to pass through that mesh take it off the shelf, it's cold, it's sitting there, it's hard, then mix, 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 and then it actually starts to get more even, nice, flowy, and you might actually start to see it when you pull out your mixing stick or whatever you're using, and it might actually start to run off there. It does look good. Here, as you can see, I've just put my actual stirring stick in there, and it's quite hard, you know, it's not coming off, it's not coming off, you know, and it's really thick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir the living... So with some gentle stirring, we might actually start to see that it's actually a lot smoother. And, you know, you can definitely tell the difference just by putting a little bit of elbow grease in there, just a small bit, it actually starts to come off, you know, so you can actually tell the difference. So, we'll put it on the screen. There's actually going to be quite a few in this order, so make sure you don't be stingy with the plaster salt, because you can always save it afterwards. Get rid of this. Man, 500 watt lights are hot. That is pumping out some serious heat. Goodness gracious. So, we're gonna flood the screen straight across. And then, we're gonna go for our first pass. Just to make sure and check what it looks like. Fantastic smooth, clean, exactly what I had when I first used it. I don't have any ink blocking up the actual mesh. I'm still getting all of the design, the pattern. It's great. So I'll just go through, hit it with a flash dryer. Again, I want to go through that process as if it was an actual shot. Go through the process, get it, hit it, heat it, push it aside, hit it again, and then see what it looks like. With, uh, I don't have a conveyor dryer to cure my shots, so what I actually do is I get them as close to cured as possible. I make sure that I actually get it up to 320 Fahrenheit, 330 Fahrenheit. It depends on what plastic oil you're using. I get it up to as close to there as possible, and then just to make sure that I have cured the ink from top to bottom, from air to threads, I make sure by putting it in to my heat press. I set that around 330 Fahrenheit and I leave it in there for about 30 seconds, just to make sure I get the heat throughout the whole design. And I recommend anybody who's doing this, if you don't have a conveyor dryer, do not rely on an actual flash dryer to cure your shots all the way through because the heat is very hard to actually, you know, organize through the whole design. So just make sure you don't want to sell a customer something that's going to start to break down and crack after the first second wash.
just put it down, I've flashed it, I've tested it, and then I've gone through my second pass and I've started to notice something. What I can see here is I can see, you might be able to see it just there, that small little neck just there. That there is dried plastisol. You won't even be able to see it, but it's right there. I don't know if that's helping, but just here is a little bit of dried plastisol. So this bit here. So all you need to do for that is grab just a baby wipe and then get two pieces or split it in half and then agitate it. So have a piece of paper this mesh and a piece of paper and agitate it and make sure you get that residual ink off there as well but I'll show you that in a second. Piece of baby wipe, pull it apart, hold it on it on both sides and just agitate it both sides working opposite just like that That'll be that. And that's all it takes because it plastisol doesn't harden until it actually gets to that cure temperature. You know, until it gets to the cure temperature, then you've actually got a little bit of time to operate. That's the best thing. That's what is sort of good with plastisol over water based ink. There we go. And rectified. No issues. gone nice and clear can you can see that light through that whole thing right now perfect just by agitating it and then we've actually got that rectified which is fine this is a test shot but she's come up just there because she's missed one of the coats she's just a little bit different but other than that schmeckle now i've got my shots ready they're, they're uh, nice and ready to go. I've got the black back design which you've seen. I've got that. I've got a crest logo on the front to go. I've also got some khaki and grey ones and tank tops to do which I've got an inverted design of this one in black and uh, design across the chest. That's four screens we've got to set up. Get ready. Go. Hi. Sometimes when you're thinking about it, you know, you're here slaving away. I am sweating. <laughs> I am sweating. That 500 watt lamp is ridiculously hot. As you can see, I still don't have my roof and I don't have any lights except that one. But sometimes you either just have to push through or give up. And I'm not a giver upper. That's a word. I'm not a giver upper. It's just me. It's always good to take on jobs, whether you make a lot of money or a little money, as long as you're making a little something, even then you might not make any, but the experience is 100% worth it. You know, it's just one thing you do. Like, I'm out here working on doing these shots for a customer, and my partner and my son are in the living room right now, having cuddles, watching the TV, in their jammy jams in the cutest part of the day, and I'm out here in front of this... This lamp, <laughs> sweaty, doing these shots, organizing it, going through the process of screen printing, cleaning it, messing up, going through that whole process. But hey, you know, it depends if you're up for it, if you want to do it, it's a fine line. Whether you want to do it every single day, you want to quit your job and do it so that you actually have time for your family, or do you want to do it on top of a job, which I'm doing, you know, Hi, that's business. Side hustle, that's what it is. I'm gonna get this stuff organized. I'm sorry for the light. I'm sorry for the light. Look at it. What and all, everybody. <laughs>
still sweating. It is 22 past 9 right now. Um, <laughs> you wouldn't believe this. I am so shoddy at this recording and stuff, I tell you. I was just like, I went through, I've got five shirts printed, gone through the process. I was like, oh, I wonder how many I do before I sort of, you know, give it up and then I can listen to your music. Because when I'm recording, I can't listen to music. And it's literally just silence in here. Just because I want to get it for you. I want to get it for you. That's that's the pain I'm going through. Just to have you, you know. But. Goodness gracious. Here is the actual recorded footage. As I went through those five shots. Yes, that is what I recorded for 20 minutes. Oh my goodness. Anyway, process is print, dryer over, then flash, push aside, print, peel off. I put it onto this board here, and then this board goes over here while it cures while I do the next shot. I'll show you this. My goodness gracious, I can't believe it. So I've already, I've already flashed, flashed this, I'll go for my next coats. Great. Got a piece of wood here, what I do, take it off, then I put it on this piece of wood, piece of wood, then I have to grab this chair, move it to the side, and then as my flash dryer is on, I can just slide this under here. Move it across. And then that will cure. Same thing, while that's curing, then I can just go through and load up my next shot. Printed, get the gun out, check it out, you're starting to see some of that um, plastisol smoke coming out as it's curing, then what I can do is I can just pull that out, pull the seat out, my shot and then put it to the side. Move this across, high presto. That's my process. Such a tight confined spot where I am that it would be really good if I could just have you know this board and chair set up next to me and then I can swing the flash dryer around and then hit it like that. But just the space in here is just ridiculous. You know, it's just organizing, getting it sorted out to be able to do that. And still, you know, it's, yeah, I just don't have the space. But I'll just keep punching away, you know. And the more I do it, then when I finally get space, I'll be very, very happy. And it will make my job easier. I'll be more inclined to do it. You go through the hard yards first. You know, if anybody can think of a better way of curing a shot and moving on to the next process, put it down there. Inbox me, go to my social media account, let me know. I'll continue going and you can see the process. We also want to make 
make sure that we keep an eye on the platen temperature because the platen temperature can start to get hot and as you're actually pulling a print, it actually hardens the ink in the mesh and then you'll notice when you start pulling the print, you start missing blobs here and there. Basically do what I told you before, get a nice piece of uh, uh, baby wipe and then work it and just agitate it side to side, just like that motion and it will start to push and push and it will clear up. change and moving that chair over there has just really helped the productivity of this whole process of just being able to move it to the side and go through that process you know that's with that one simple move I've been able to do maybe an extra shot and a half and the you know time frame that I was previously if I just kept doing that move the chair and it does your back in I noticed when I did 30 shots it's, yeah, your back takes a cane in doing this. So that's all my shots. I've got two grey, uh, three grey, two khaki to do. So they're in black. So I've got two other screens to set up just for these ones. And I've got one other screen to set up for my black shots. Goodness gracious. I've got one tank top that needs white on a screen, then I'm gonna to have to clean it, and then I can start putting the black through. What I recommend doing is putting the white through the mesh first, cleaning it, and then putting the black through. Because if you start putting the, the black through, then the white, it's harder to clean out, and you kinda, of, you don't get as a, crispy clear white as you would if you had you know started with the white you know, everything's great clear design you know I'm gonna put it in my press everything's fine it's great can't really complain to be honest I don't know if I told you but it's very very hot in here with that light the door get some air in here because the smell of plastisol curing and that 500 watt lamp my goodness oh it's so hot I'm sweating it is an absolute rainy day today it's very rainy But hey, this is what the shed is like right now. That's not too bad, it's got enough space for everything. I've actually got two boxes of screens there. So they've got six screens each, that's 12 screens there. I'm using four at the moment, plus the two that are in there at the moment. So I've got myself a fair few screens now, which is good, and they're really good quality. Those ones that I have, the 160 mesh, they're just really, they, and I can tell the difference between these flimsy 110s. These 110s here, like, the difference between the actual, it's nearly double the size, you know? Even the construction of it, you can see it's a lot better, and the mesh, it's all saggy, so it's lost its tension, you know, this, you couldn't bounce a coin off that if you tried, I don't think, even if you threw it as hard as you could. But now, I've just got to get the, um, the Crest logo design on those shots, and they're done, sorted, really good. The really good thing about a Crest logo is it's a small 
point it's a small position so using the heat gun is what I'm actually going to do I'm going to go through and use the heat gun to cure those because it is nice and quick you just have to concentrate it on that one area and once the heat guns up to temperature it just it, you can see it you hold it up off of the platen blow it and then you can actually see the curing uh, smoke start to come out the neck hole it's a sight to behold I see uh, but I'm gonna listen to some music so I might not record until I've gotten my other screen set up you let me have that let me have that at least let me have that at least the silence is killing me <laughs> it's killing me oh goodness gracious I don't know what I'm gonna listen to it's either blur I could be listening to the new Foo Fighters album so many choices so I got my other screen ready I taped it up there's a fair bit of taping to do I've got a design there I used for another shot and I've got my sh my thing on there looking absolutely fantastic I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a temp check but this is the only white tank top that I've got to do this design on you know I'll do that then I can push that aside and that tank top's done it's got the back design and it's got the front chest design on it so that's one shot done all I need to do is then give it a cure in here and then take it in when I take it inside put it in my heat press and then set it to 330 and get it cured through which I need to make sure I get done but I'm just gonna go through this design I'll pop it up here and then we'll see how it goes but just in case you were wondering I was listening to Weezer, OK Human, the new album out. I just, I'm loving it. Grapes of Wrath, man. Grapes of Wrath. Can I say that? Anyway, there's a bit of a plug for you, but if you check it out, it's actually pretty tight. And the first song on the album as well. Here we go. Print's done, now I'm gonna get that off and then I'm going to do another print. I've got the inverse version of this going on the back of those four, the khaki and the greys. I've got the inverse version of that. As you can see, I've already used it before, but that's that ink's actually fine. It's just residual stuff. You could probably only really get rid of the majority of that with a pressure washer. I probably just have to go through and clean it a little bit, have a print run, see what it's like, and then it will go. But a little bit more music for me while I'm cleaning up because it takes a little bit of time. And I'll be back. Ta -da! I've literally just cleaned up that screen. It's off. Now I've only got the Black Crest logo to do on my shirts. So I got my greys done, my khaki done. Those were both black with the, the print on the front and print on the back. I got my black tank top with the white on the back and the same logo as the khaki and the grey but with white. So I had to clean that for a second time. Then, you know, all I have to do is get the Crest logo done. You might have seen I did have a center line on my platen. I got the center line. This helps me line up my actual screens and then it makes it easier 
two seconds, I'm actually. <laughs> so, cut. Right, so, as you see, I've got my center line on my platen. That just lines up all my screens. Makes it easier, then when the shirt goes on, I've got something to actually line up the center tag neck. The, the neck tag, you know, it's not always center, it's just a good rough idea. My goodness, I'm gonna sneeze again. And, what I'm gonna do is what I didn't do before I put the adhesive on, is I didn't actually mark out my crest logo center line. So, usually you wanna have the center line down four fingers roughly you could have Andre the Giant fingers you could have skeleton fingers it's very different don't get me and say hi this is specific but four fingers quite large roughly down from the neckline is where you want your image to sort of roughly start then when you have a crest logo come down those four fingers roughly and then center line of that actual design four fingers from the center line so just like that four fingers down from the neck and then four fingers from the center line so i'm gonna want my actual center line just beside my pinky there what i'm gonna do is i'm going to mark four fingers from there and then what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna draw a nice center line so let's get into it so I've got my centre line here, then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to come in four fingers from there and just give myself a rough dot. I'm just going to put it here like that. So that's a rough four fingers centre line. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a ruler. Should be here, then should be like three and a half inches or something. Hey, this is a mill. But I think that's three and a half inches. It's just a little bit more than three and a half inches. So I'm going to pull it at 85 mil. Yeah, I'm actually going to bring it in. I'm going to put that dot there. 85 mil from the center line. Then I'm going to bring it down and do exactly the same thing. I'm just going to put a dot there. Bang. Then I'm going to come down again. And then I'm going to put another dot. So roughly, that's going to be my center line going down here. Something doesn't quite seem right, I think that one's, but I'm actually just gonna do this. Let's check it, 85 mil from the center line, right in the middle, 85 mil. Is just a reference point to get it semi-lined up, because it's never gonna be perfect anyway by the time you're putting it on and off, on and off, on and off. So there we go, I've got my actual center line for my logo. There we go. I'm actually just going to give it a little bit of a clean up. So that was mineral tops. I'm just going to work it in. Then I'm just going to actually apply some pressure. Gorgeous! What I'm going to do is the old trick of doing this thing where you click and then it's done. Ah. So now I'm going to ink it up. Woohoo! Practice shot. Bada bing, bada boom. On it goes. See that waterproof adhesive works <coughs> so well. So on it goes. Here we go. Ergonomic. This thing is absolutely fantastic. Just that that, that motion there, just so handy. Cool. Gonna flood the screen. Give it a nice flood, and then I'm going to come across. Bang, 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 bang. Oh. Yahtzee. Bellissimo. Bellissimo. So, come across. Come here. Come here. I'm going to go through the cure phase of this. 
what we're going to do is get it nice and hot oh yes nice and hot and then we've got a thing on here just give it a nice hit nice hit get it nice and warm and what we can do after that is then we can hit it again but this is only the test so all I want to do is just show you the process of curing it just going through like this that's going to be fantastic then we're going to raise it up and then we're just going to blow through like that and then we might start seeing some of that juicy plastisol smoke coming through that's great that's awesome smoke there it is coming through letting us know that we're up to that cure temperature yeah what you don't want to do is you don't want to hold your uh, hold it on there for too long all the moisture's coming out of the fabric letting it go, letting it go, letting it go, come on, come on, come on, come on well, it's actually taking a long time to try and scotch that thread so if you're scotching your um, material you're really doing a good job so now we're gonna get it on get it on order of 16 tops, tank tops, etc. Three different colours with the two different, with the white and the black plastisol. And the time would be before 12. It'd be, it wouldn't be 12 o'clock yet. Let me just wait a second. It is 11.50 right now. So that's the 16 shirts, front and back logos on all of them with the black and the white and making sure that they're all clean. You know, and that's including the little break I had to have. I had to go inside and have a coffee and have a snuggle with my son. But hey, those are on the big jobs. And that's the best thing of just having your own job that you can plod along on the weekends, earning money, you can sort of go in and out, start when you want, finish when you want, as long as the job gets done, you know, hey, I love it, I, it's, it's really good, you know, some days it's great, some days it's an absolute pain in the behind, you know, sorting out issues that pop up, oh my goodness, it, it can be quite laborious, but in the end, you know, you're creating something for yourself, you're not actually answering to anyone but yourself, you know, you've got a way of making money if your full-time job ends up falling apart or something happens at work and you can't work anymore, you know, COVID, hey, look, this, this could be a nice little way to have some money keeping you ticking along while you're looking for another full-time job. So I've got to give, the, give it that, you know. And then maybe in the future, I'd love to be able to sell my things on online platform, you know, sell things and people can say, hey, look, I wouldn't mind having some of that, you know, as another avenue. And then I can go through, create it, set it there, sell it, bring in the rain, bring in the rain, ooh, ooh, oh, oh. Now to get it done. Well, I hope you like that video and if you enjoy it, like, subscribe and I love you and I appreciate you. Tasmania, baby. Tasmania.